Woo! Today, Apple just announced the brand new M2 Mac Mini. This is my M1 Mac Mini, one of my favorite computers of all time. So today, let's go through all of the updates and actually kit one out and buy one for the studio here. So let's get right to it. I love the Mac Mini. It's my favorite computer, one of the best computers that Apple makes, especially since they moved over to the Apple Silicon. It's been fantastic. This was my constant companion for about a year running all of this YouTube stuff. And I imagine the M2 will be able to do something very similar to that. I, I'm too excited. I'm too excited right now. Yes, they also announced the M2 Pro and M2 Max MacBook Pros, but that's not what I'm most excited about. I'm most excited about the Mac Mini because as you can see, it still starts at $599. That's such an amazing price for everything that you get out of the Mac Mini because as we'll see, almost every problem that I had with this, which were admittedly very few, they've all been fixed and I can't, I cannot wait to talk about it. So you can see that now instead of only having the option of the M1 processor, you can have the M2 standard or the M2 Pro. And there's actually a little more variation in here than you might initially think for a Mac mini, but we'll get into that as we get into all of the ordering options. But you can get an eight core CPU, 10 core GPU, all the way up to a 12 core CPU, 19 core GPU. They say things like it'll be able to handle 8K ProRes video. We've already seen that happen on the M2 MacBook Air and the M2 MacBook Pro 13. So I wouldn't get too excited about that. We already know that these things can happen. And besides like, this is, hey spoilers, this is, this is not 8K video, so I don't really need that. But that is pretty cool that they're continuing to push the boundaries of what you can do with these processors. And I think the M2 is gonna make a lot more sense in a machine like this than a machine like that. You can see here, they say that it is 4.7 times faster than an Intel-based Mac mini, which I believe, I mean, the Intel-based Mac minis were not awful, but they weren't as good as the Apple Silicon versions. Mini does that, it comes with Mac OS Ventura. Towering performance minus the tower. I really like that when you build a PC, there does have to be some kind of a case in there. And yes, I've seen very small cases for very small PCs, but if you're not trying to do that and you don't wanna build a computer and you just want something small, compact yet very powerful and sleek. This is a such a good form factor. The only thing that I wish is that this time around, and I don't think they have, we'll have to see when we get to the physical design. I was kind of hoping to see some ports on the front like the Mac Studio. That's the only, we just need some ports on the front. Unified memory, we will continue to get Apple's very fast unified memory. If you're not an Apple verse person, that's just what Apple calls RAM. Yes, there are technical differences between RAM and unified memory. That's not the scope of this video. Suffice to say, active memory, you get really fast, really good stuff. But what's really important, because here's where things have changed, are the ports on the back. Like the M1, you get lots of options, where if you compare the two, it is very similar, except Whereas these are Thunderbolt 3 ports on the M1 Mac Mini, here you get Thunderbolt 4 ports. And what that really means, it's not a lot of difference in data or power transfer speeds. Those are all pretty similar between Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4. But what this gives you, what Thunderbolt 4 Apple version gives you, is a lot more external display support. And that's one of the things that I've complained a lot on, like on the M2 MacBook Air is, these ports are Thunderbolt 3, and it will not work with multiple external displays. But here, you get Thunderbolt 4, and HDMI and USB-A, if we go over to the M2 Pro version, we get two more additional Thunderbolt 4. So I don't know that I've ever used all of these ports at once, but if you need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different kinds of connections on the back of your Mac mini, well, here you go. This does it for you. That's one of the big complaints I had about this was that you just could only have Thunderbolt 3. And I, Apple just needs to retire Thunderbolt 3. That's that's it. Let's just, hopefully this will be the last time we ever have to talk about it because it'll be Thunderbolt 4 and then Thunderbolt 5, whatever magic that is in the future. We can talk about how fast it is. We also will be getting Wi-Fi 6 Echo, 6E, 6 Echo, however they want to say it. So 2.4 gigabytes of throughput over Wi-Fi, that's pretty darn good. Accessories, we can talk about accessories with like the studio display, keyboard, all that stuff. We will not be mentioning that here. Okay, so that's all the updates. So essentially in the M2 standard version, you get the same shell. In the M2 Pro version, you get the same shell, but two more Thunderbolt 4 ports. Let's go through the ordering option and buy my specific version of the M2 Mac Mini because normally I buy the basic, basic cheapest one. But I think for this thing, I'm gonna upgrade a couple parts because I think it's really cool. So let's look at that cheapest version first. The cheapest version comes with the eight core CPU, 10 core GPU, eight gigabytes of unified memory, and 256 gigabytes solid state drive for $599. 
that's a pretty good deal. I do wish it was 512 gigabytes of storage, but I mean, for 599, it's hard to argue. Will you get more performance out of this than the M1 standard with its eight core CPU and eight core GPU? Eh, a little bit, but not enough that I would warrant an upgrade. How much can we upgrade this? Not much. It's a lot like the M2 MacBook Air and MacBook Pro 13 in that you only get the option to go up to 24 gigabytes of unified memory and a two terabyte solid state drive. And if you do kit all that out, it will cost $17.99. Now, one of the cool things that they did with an update to the M1 Mac Mini, but all of the M2 Mac Minis seem to have it, is you can get 10 gigabit Ethernet for $100 more, which is really good if you are somebody like me that has a home network that supports 10 gigabit Ethernet. That's what I will be getting. So if you max out the cheapest version, it goes from $599 to $18.99. That's a bit... That's a little bit of a difference, right? So there's a middle version that has the eight core CPU, 10 core GPU, 512 gigabytes of storage. It's essentially just a storage upgrade, but the real impressive one for me and the one that I will be buying is the M2 Pro variant. What I've been complaining about since the M1 Max processor came out was I was hoping that they would come out with an M1 Max variant of the Mac Mini. And apparently that will never happen. The M2 Pro will have to suffice. And thankfully it does seem to be a pretty powerful chip. So 10 core CPU, 16 core GPU, or you can go up to a 12 core CPU, 19 core GPU for $300 more. I won't be doing that. I find that the 10 core processors are more than enough power for what I need. But here you can go up to 32 gigabytes of unified memory and you can go to an eight terabyte solid state drive, which is like, if you go up to that eight terabyte solid state drive for $2,400, that's what like six base model Mac minis by itself. So you could have like a whole stack or you could get eight terabytes of solid state drive. And if we max this sucker out, that comes to 40, Four ninety nine. I I that's way too expensive. That's way more than I would ever want to spend on a little Mac Mini. But I want to buy that just to say, like, look, I've got a Mac Mini that costs as much as a motorcycle. See this? This is this equivalent of a motorcycle. I think that would be funny to say. But what I'm recommending and what I will be actually ordering, and you will watch me order, I'm gonna go with the 10 core M2 Pro, 32 gigabytes of unified memory, one terabyte solid state drive and the 10 gigabit ethernet, and that will be $19.99. Now that's not a cheap computer, but that will be a computer that gives so much capability. The only thing that sucks about it is I've noticed that it adds like a whole month of delivery for the 10 gigabit ethernet. So we'll probably have to buy a model so I can make videos about it, but then my 10 gigabit will get here and it will be my home computer because I'm really excited about it. I know that it doesn't have like all the whiz bang features. It doesn't have like high definition screens or anything like that, but the Mac mini is a very practical computer and I'm a very practical person and I am actually the most excited about the M2 Pro Mac mini. But what about you? Are you excited about the M2 Mac mini? Do you have an M1 Mac mini? and are considering upgrading, let me know in the comments below because I would love to know what everybody else thinks about this. And if you like this video, but you don't want to upgrade and you want to save a ton of money, click here to see why you should still buy the M1 Mac Mini. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.